Hey guys! Today I'm going to be giving you my care tips and tricks for Stromanth Trio Star. This is probably the plant I get the most messages about from people on comments and then also in my Instagram DMs. If you're not following me on Instagram, my username is here if you'd like to follow along there on Instagram. This is definitely the plant I get asked the most about. This one, I don't know what it is, especially people seem to really struggle with it. And I don't know what it is, but in my experience, this has been one of my easier plants of that plant family. So I don't know, maybe I've just gotten really lucky, but hopefully some of my tips and tricks will help keep your stromanth plant alive and thriving. And please don't forget to leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down about if you found this video helpful. The thumbs up and thumbs down feature is really, really helpful to me to see if you're liking the type of videos I put out. So yeah, please don't forget to do that. And also leave a comment down below with your best stromanth trio star tips and what's worked for you for keeping your plant alive and mostly happy or extremely happy. So with all of that being said, let's just get into it. This plant here is my Stromanth Trio Star. It is honestly one of my top 10 favorite plants in my entire collection. And the reason for that is the coloring. Like, are you kidding me? The variegation on this baby is just beautiful. And what adds to it is it has been a relatively easy care plant for me in my situation. If I don't know, it has, but this plant is extremely popular to people because it does grab your attention. I mean, it has these dark pink and hot pink undersides, which just really, really pop. And then not only that, but the top of the foliage is just absolutely beautiful. Probably some of the most beautiful foliage in any plants I personally have in my collection. This is a plant that does tend to fold up and fold down a little bit. That is also really fun to watch. As far as care for this baby, I think we're going to start with lighting. It does like medium light and medium light is kind of a vague term, but a few things it does not like that you can keep in mind when finding a spot for this plant is it doesn't like any direct sunlight. So if you're going to keep your plant next to say an Eastern window, try to pull it back a little bit or put a sheer curtain in front of the window to help diffuse some of that lighting so you're not going to burn the foliage. And then it also doesn't like too low of lighting. Ideally, I think this plant does really well in front of an eastern or western facing window. I keep mine pulled about two feet back from a west facing window that does also have a white sheer curtain over top. It just sits on the floor on this little saucer and it really, really likes this spot. I did keep this baby outside during the summer on my covered deck. It would get some diffused direct lighting. A little bit of sunlight would shine through the tree, the trees in my backyard and hit directly on the leaves, but it was so speckled and sparse and it only happened for a few hours out of the day, I think it was fine. Any more than that, I definitely think this plant would have burned to a crisp outside. It does really appreciate heat. It also appreciates humidity. So keep that in mind if brown tips kind of bug you, maybe don't put it outside if you live somewhere dry like I do. Oh, and I am going to say if you're someone who is bugged by an imperfect plant that does get some tip browning and things like that, that doesn't really bother me but I know it bothers a lot of people. This may not be the best plant for you because even though my plant is doing really, really well, some of the leaves do still develop brown tips. Maybe just make sure you're okay with a little bit of crispy edges before getting this plant. Just throwing that out there. So I kept my plant outside during the summer. It was really happy, brought it in. I trimmed off like half the plant. You guys saw that in a past video I did and I moved it in front of that west window. It has done really, really well. So I think moving it from that warm to cooler indoor temp. Right now I keep my house at around 65 degrees-ish. Around 65 to 70 degrees-ish, mostly around 65. I like it a little bit cooler as opposed to a little bit warmer and it still has been popping new growth. So, I mean, you can see here, you can see there's a whole bunch of new growth. The new growth does come in more yellow and then as it ages, it'll fade to more of a light pink white. So that is something to keep in mind. Like here's a really good example here, this leaf. This is a new leaf, pretty yellow. Um, and then it will fade to this. This is an older leaf. So you can just kind of see the difference there. So as long as you're finding that good lighting, it'll be fine. 
Eastern Western windows are a really great place to keep it. The next thing I think people can kind of screw up the hair straw mat plant is the watering. I haven't had to water my plant very often. Here are some factors that are going to have to play in that are going to play into how often you have to water it. So I have my plant in a the plastic nursery container. I haven't repotted it yet. I'm probably going to wait another full season before repotting it. If you keep your trio star in terracotta or something super porous like that, where the water can evaporate more quickly out of the soil of the plant, you are going to have to water it more frequently. So I do think it's really, really helpful to keep this in ceramic or plastic in my case. It just helps you not have to think about this plant as often and you will have to water it quite a bit more frequently if you put it in terracotta. So just keep that in mind. Right now, I'm probably watering this baby once every two weeks. Again, mine is in a large pot size. It's quite a bit bigger than the actual plant itself. So that does help retain moisture a little bit. It would also be really beneficial if you could mix like sphagnum moss into your soil mixture to help retain some of that moisture as well. well I water mine about every two weeks right now in the winter time. I just checked my humidity measurer thing and it says my house is currently at 60 degrees, hum 60 degrees. 60% humidity and my indoor temp is 64 degrees right now. So that is pretty high humidity for how cold it is. I've been running my humidifiers today, but normally my humidity isn't that high. Normally it's more around the 40 to 45% mark. It does just fine with that. Like I said, it will get some brown tips here and there, especially if the temperature and humidity fluctuates a lot in a short amount of time. Also my plant probably browns because I do just use tap water. I know for these kinds of plants, it is better to use filtered or distilled water. So if you if you are super opposed to the browning, definitely use filtered or distilled, but I just stick this guy in my shower and water it with the shower water. And that's probably why he has a few little brown tips. I'm sorry, little plant, but I do it for you. It's for your own good. Uh, the reason I do it that way is I really like to spray down this plant in the shower quite frequently. So this is a plant that is extremely susceptible to spider mites. I don't know what it is about like Calathea and prayer plants in general, like these kinds of family of plants, but if they dry out like even slightly too much, spider mites just flock to them. Spraying them down like that helps keep the foliage more damp and the soil more damp and all that and raises the humidity around immediately around the plant. Spider mites don't like a dry environment. So yeah, it just helps with that. If you can miss this plant, that would be excellent or keep it next to a humidifier, that would be excellent. He would love that. Um, but yeah, I just spray it down every single time I water every two weeks or so-ish. And that works really well. Haven't had any problems with spider mites with this guy yet. So on the flip side of the watering, it is also possible to overwater these. You do want to wait for the soil to be dry. I would say I probably wait for the soil to be dry about, I don't know if you even can see what I'm saying. Like, is that like three inches down? The top of the soil starts here. Yeah, so I would probably wait for about two inches of the top of the soil to be dry between waterings. You can check, you can use a moisture meter and stick it in there to make sure it's not overly dry. Um, you really don't want the soil to hit all the way bone dry between waterings, but just those few top inches. Once those few top inches are dry, if you plop it in some water, it'll be just fine. That'll work. It'll be happy with that. As for humidity, like I said, it does really appreciate higher humidity, but it doesn't necessarily need it. Now, something to keep in mind about that statement I'm making is, is if it's not getting higher humidity, like my plant isn't, I don't keep the humidity at 60% all the time. It will also develop the brown tips. So just be wary of that. And if you can set it right next to your humidifier, it'll really love that extra moisture it gets. And that will help to prevent some of the brown tips. But even then the brown tips sometimes just happen. It is what it is. It happens in nature where plants choose to live in the environment they choose to live in. So I mean, if it's happening in our household, that's kind of to be expected because we don't most of the time have ideal environments. That's just my motto. We're having more authentic jungles if there's a little bit of brown tip. I'm making that up. I just say that to make myself feel better. You can also cut the brown tips if you want to. 
I don't bother with that. So the best way to propagate this plant and share it with your friends would be to separate the plant crowns out of your pot. I'll show you some close-ups, but as you can see here, there are just like separate little individual plants. So each of those, I would be able to separate and gift or do whatever with out of this main pot and pot into its own separate little container and it would, it would become its own plant. I just choose to keep them all together. I really love how full this guy is looking. So, but if you do want to propagate it, maybe just wait until you're repotting your plant already and then go ahead and separate those crowns and pot them up individually. You can also propagate these with cuttings. So if you decide to do a cutting, what you're going to look for is on each of the little stems. Let's see if I can show you right here. There is a little like joint. Um, I don't know if you can see from that far away, I'll insert close-ups, but there is a little joint on each of the stems where it's kind of angled a little bit. Like there's either going to be a little bump or it's gonna kind of go like this, or it's going to be thicker and then get quite a bit thinner. So those three things. Uh, you can go ahead and cut below that and make sure that joint is in water. It will propagate. These ones are a little bit more difficult to propagate by cuttings that way, but it's not impossible. So. Uh, if you can separate crowns from your plant, that definitely 100% is the best way to go about it. Oh, I forgot to talk about fertilizing. So also, I think fertilizing is a thing these plants are very picky about. In my experience, they really appreciate an organic fertilizer as opposed to something, I don't know. I've had really good luck with the Alaska fish fertilizer. It does smell and that part kind of sucks about it, but my plants really love it, so I'm going to continue to use it. You could use worm poop. I also want to say really quick, I forgot to put this in the video and as I'm editing, I'm like screaming at myself to include this and I just never did. That's so annoying. I'm so annoying is how frequently I'm fertilizing the Stromath Trio Star. So I am one that I do fertilize my plants at, with every single watering, even in the winter when they say we're not supposed to. Um, as long as my plant is exhibiting signs of new growth, then I'm going to continue fertilizing it. So that's that's just how I go about doing things. In the summer months, I do fertilize with every single watering at full strength because I'm able to fertilize them outside. Uh, I don't have to worry about the fishy fertilizer smell in my house, but if you are one who fertilizes your plants indoors, you can um, dilute the fertilizer mixture so maybe dilute it by half or a quarter strength for, with every watering. And in the winter, I do also still use the fish fertilizer on my plants. I just dilute it to that quarter strength, if that makes sense. And there are in, like mixing instructions, amounts you're supposed to use on the bottle. So I just dilute it by a quarter during the winter if I'm watering indoors. And then I use full strength outdoors in the summer and I'll probably do like half strength inside so I don't have to deal with the fishy smell. There you go. I'll link all of the fertilizers I recommend in the description box. I personally use the fish fertilizer that's down there, but there are so, some other great options that you can choose from for a plant like this. So something super organic and natural, this plant is really going to appreciate. If you use like a, a man, a man produced, a man made chemical full fertilizer that's not, made out of super natural. If it's made out of like harsh ingredients, it can burn the foliage. That could be one of the problems if your plant isn't doing too hot. So definitely recommend a more organic fertilizer. Again, the ones I recommend will be at the top of the description box. If you wanna try out some new fertilizers and you're not really sure where to start. Oh, some warning signs of this plant. Okay, so if your plant is getting yellow, that can mean one of a few things. It can mean your plant is under or overwatered, but most often it'll mean that it has been infected by spider mites. At least that's what I found. I haven't had spider mites on this plant in particular, but with other stromanth in my collection, it seems to be that if they start to develop a little bit of yellowing, it usually is spider mites. So I will be doing a pest care video on spider mites if you're curious how to deal with those. Be on the lookout for that if you need some help with spider mites, but yeah, that's usually what it can mean. And then another thing that people frequently ask me about is if the leaves are curling, like a little taco kinda. <laughs> Most often the curling leaves means that the plant is thirsty, but it can also mean it's getting, it's too hot or it's getting too direct of sunlight. So if you notice that, maybe check the soil first thing, see see how dry it is. 
Um, go ahead and water it. If that doesn't resolve the issue, then maybe move it to a place with slightly lower light where it's not getting any direct rays or lower the temperature of where it sits, maybe stick it into a cooler room. So that's kind of the order I would deal with that. Other than that though, there's not too many issues you have to worry about with this plant. I really think it's low maintenance and if you kind of ignore it, it seems to do a little bit better than if you baby it. That's just my, my experience. All those care tips have worked for me and my Trio Star plant. Maybe try them out for yourself and tweak it to fit your environment a little bit, depending on the signs you're noticing on your plant in your home. That's all it really takes is getting to know the basics of a certain plant variety care, I think, and then tweaking it for our own environment. Each of our homes are its own little situation its own little world. I'm like blabbering on and on, but I think you know what I mean. Hopefully that, hopefully my point comes across by that, but just tweak it according to the signs your plant is showing you and it should be fine. That is it for my Stromath Trio Star plant care tips and tricks. Let me know what you thought of this video. Please thumbs up or thumbs down the video depending on what you thought of it. And if you have any additional tips that have worked for you and your Stromath plant, please leave them in the comments down below. It is much appreciated. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.